all of your online course questions answered. Well, at least most of them. Coming up right now on the Rise to the Top podcast. And welcome, 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 my friends. It's your great and good friend, David Simon Garland, a.k.a. DSG. Going to dive into some of your questions, your issues, your challenges today here on the podcast. By the way, super excited. My three-and-a-half-year-old just went to the dentist, so I've got a little silence right now. Off to the dentist, right? So, And now daddy can nice and calmly record his podcast, right? So here's what we're doing here today on the show is that you've probably seen from some of the past episodes and some episodes coming up that we've got people that come on the show for a coaching or consulting session, whatever you want to call it. I guess it's kind of both. I don't know. It's kind of both. And you know, we, we dive into challenges and issues they're having with their online courses and their business and, and we try to solve them and come up with strategies. And, and you can check those all out, of course, at therisetop.com slash subscribe. You can subscribe to the show and also on iTunes, risetop.com slash iTunes. You can check out all the past episodes on there. But we have way more people that submit challenges and things are going through than I can have on the show. Otherwise, I'd have 4,000 people on the show. We'd have too many people on the show. So what I decided to do here in this episode, and there might be another one coming for this too, because there's a lot of questions that have come in, is that I've gone through kind of the list of submissions and questions and things like that and picked out some here. And we're going to kind of go a little rapid fire and go through some of the challenges that people are having now and offer solutions. Now, you might be thinking, well, what do I care about other people's challenges? Well, here's the thing. A lot of times these challenges are shared. These are things that are very common. These are things that come up that you might be facing, that you might be facing in the future. So the idea here is if we can wipe some things off the slate, off the whatever we want to call it, then you know, we're going to help out everyone. So this is going to be, by the way, just like everything on the podcast, everything here is completely unscripted, unrehearsed. All I have in front of me here is a list of questions because I want to do this like I'm going to give my very best. This is like getting live advice, right? So this is not, I see some podcasts out there. I don't know about you, but I don't like the ones that are so scripted. I mean, really scripted down to the word. There's other ones. There's some in my industry that drive me crazy. You're just on there like, oh my God, is it a robot or a podcast? Robot, podcast. Robot, podcast. That's not, that's not how we roll here on the rise to the top. You're getting the raw, uncensored, if you will, and all that comes with that. So let's just hop into it. I'm going to take on as many as I can in this episode. We'll see how we do on length and then maybe do another episode. We can do some more. So let's hop at it. So the first one comes from Alexia from fearfreechildbirth.com, fearfreechildbirth.com, and she's struggling to get results with her course. I'm paraphrasing a few things here, but we'll get in the nuts and bolts of it. She said that she kind of got burnt with the advice of building your list and launching every few months. My target audience are fearful pregnant women. I help them clear their fears by a positive birth. By the time I built my list and launched with three, three-part video series, they had had babies. I reckon now I have three to five months to do the no like trust thing, et cetera, et cetera. I also want my course to be evergreen. If my course isn't available, they can't wait. They'll go elsewhere. I've lost them and the vicious cycle begins. Sorry for the context. Giving my transient market, what is the best strategy for my first $50,000 using courses? Okay. So let's think about this for a second. And Alexia, first and foremost, I see some very limiting beliefs here that we need to kind of get off the table. Like, first of all, building your email list is critical. That is that is where your customers are going to come from. So to think that that was not good advice, that's that's completely wrong. So building your email list is obviously critical. When you initially launched your course, it took a while to do it. So you're saying that, hey, I came up with this idea for the course. By the time I launched it, these pregnant women had babies. Well, that's in the past. Let's come up with a better way that we could do it. So what I would recommend for you is, by the way, there is... That's ridiculous. I don't know where that advice came from that you need three to five months to build that no like and trust thing with someone. That is, that is not true at all. That is 0% true. You could do it much, much faster than that. Much, much faster than that. So three to five months to build trust with someone before you sell them something, that is BS, my friend. That is not true at all. First of all, we got to shift kind of our thinking there before we start solving the problem, right? So what I'd recommend for you, Alexia is that you need another conversion source for your course. And you need to focus all the traffic going into that. And I would highly, highly recommend 
for what you're doing and, and you've got you know pregnant mothers here, you're trying to help them with childbirth, I would highly recommend doing a webinar. And I would start by doing it live and then I would eventually automate that so new people could come in all the time and go into the webinar. Now, the guys will put a link up here, our editors, to my most kick-butt webinar blueprint ever, which I think is... Let me see what the link is. I might even know what it is. The rise to the top dot com slash kick butt, something like that. I'll have to check on what it might be. But I would I would definitely recommend no, that's not it. It's something else. But I'll have maybe Lindsay create the rise top dot com slash kick butt so that we have that. But what I would definitely recommend is focusing your energy into something like that. Why a webinar? Well webinars not only are they great for list building, people have to enter their email to go on to the webinar, but they're a fast conversion tool as well because you're basically going to educate people for 45 minutes to an hour and then you're going to have your pitch for your course. And so this is not going to take three to five months. It's not going to do anything like that. You're going to have people that sign up for the webinar and sign up for the course at the end of your webinar. So that would be what I would do now because that's a great way to start and I would start driving live traffic to those webinars, start doing them, let's say, once a week to start for a little while. So I would say, you know, honestly... You could do one over the next few weeks, do it every Wednesday, and then start automating it from there. So I know that that's the we got lots of questions I'd be covering here, but that's that's what I would do strategy wise. So I would pick a webinar and I would do one to two traffic methods to drive to that webinar, and I would go from there to get to that 50k. That's what I would do. So let me know how it goes for you. Okay, cool. Now here's a question from Sally from Australia. Let me take a little sip of my triple espresso here. Sally from Australia. I am a complete newbie, novice. That's totally cool, Sally. Everyone starts new, right? At some point. What is the cost factor in building and launching a course? I've got nothing to go on yet. What technology, whatever platforms you need, what software, et cetera, et cetera. Do you have like a spreadsheet of like monthly costs and things like that? Okay. So I'm going to break down kind of the technology costs here a little bit into a monthly basis. We actually had someone ask this in the Create Awesome Online Courses Facebook group as well in terms of like what's kind of the bare minimum from a technology standpoint for a successful online course. Now, a couple prefaces here. What I'm not going to include, because I'm going to go for like what are the monthly costs tech-wise, some upfront things, right? So up some upfront things. So what are some upfront things that you might have to think about? One is, of course, a microphone. Number two is a camera. And number three is a way to record yourself. So that might be ScreenFlow on a, on a Mac or Camtasia on a PC. I use ScreenFlow, I, you know, et cetera. So you got your microphone and your screen recording and your camera. Those are kind of fixed costs. Those are a one-time thing that you would purchase, right? So let's talk about what are the ongoing costs for an online course, okay? So let's talk about what I would do for tech and what I would recommend. So first of all, you need your course website, your course website. So course cats is 59 bucks a month. Let's say we go with the monthly plan. Course Cats is what I recommend. It's created by my web developer, Brad. $59 a month. Okay? Now, what about hosting for your website? So if Course Cats is, let's say, the house, then you need land, right? What's your land? What's your hosting? Well, we now actually have hosting through Course Cats that's $7.95 a month called Cats Hosting. So you got 59 bucks a month for your entire website. And by the way, that includes landing pages, that includes your sales pages, that includes where your customers log in, that includes everything that would go on a website, your checkout pages, thank you pages, you know, opt-in pages, giveaway pages, blog, everything you can need is in there in Course Cats for 59 bucks a month. And then you're doing $7.95 a month for hosting. Okay. Now, plugins. What are plugins? Plugins are things that you can add to your website that can then talk with other pieces of technology. Well, first of all, there's free membership plugins that we go through in Course Cats. So you can get a free membership plugin. And what a membership plugin does is it basically just allows your customers to see your content and blocks everybody else out, right? Because you only want your customers to see your course. You don't want random people to see your course until they purchased, right? So most plugins are free. We, in fact, have some free membership plugins with Course Cats, and there's also some paid ones that are nominal fees, but you can have a free membership plugin. Then a payment processor, right? So a payment processor, how do people pay with their credit cards, i.e. something like PayPal? PayPal's free. Stripe, 
Great recommendation. It's what about 99.9% of my customers use. Stripe is also free. They just take a small percentage of every credit card payment. So Stripe is free. Another, nothing wrong with free, right? That's, there you go. And then it comes down to just a couple more things that you're going to need. An autoresponder, which is how you're going to send your emails out, and media hosting, okay? Autoresponder, media hosting. So autoresponder, great one that I recommend for most people until you get into the super complicated automation world like that we're in after being in business for 10 years is ConvertKit. ConvertKit is great. They've got a great, really basic plan at $29 a month. It's a great place to start. I personally use Entreport because we've got a lot of bells and whistles that we're doing with a business that does several million dollars a year. You could always scale up or maybe you won't need to do that, but ConvertKit is a great starting point. It's one of my most recommended autoresponders, 29 bucks a month to get you going there. It can even be cheaper when you just start out for with just a few people, okay? And then finally, it's media hosting. Where do you put up like your videos and things like that? A couple recommendations. Vimeo and Wistia, either one of those for a video player. And they, they've got different features. Just take a look out at it. It depends on your budget, depends on where you want to go. Wistia is 99-ish a month. Vimeo is like $20 a month. They're great places to host your videos. They're high quality. You'll get great analytics, great quality, great customer service. So Wistia or Vimeo, you can go with your videos. And also another one I like is Amazon S3. Amazon S3 is a great place to host files. So if you want to host an MP3 file or a PDF or have your customers even download your video, Amazon S3 is the way to go with that. And what's nice about Amazon S3, it's based on usage. So it depends on how many people download it. And it's very cheap. It's very cheap. We've got people that download tons and tons of things a month. We've got you know, now I think close to 10,000 customers in my different programs and products and programs. And my Amazon fee is very cheap. So, and, and for a while, it was under under $20 a month. I mean, it was under $15 a month for a long period of time too. So that's a great little media hosting place. So that's kind of the gamut of it. You know, I don't know if we're going to be able to put a link to everything. I've got some affiliate links also in there, but the, the, that's what I recommend. So if you break it down, Course Cats, 59 bucks a month. Cats Hosting, $7.95 a month. ConvertKit, $29 a month. Stripe Free. Membership plugin could be free. Wistio or Vimeo is $20 to $99. Let's go with 20 and you're looking at $115.95 a month for all the technology you need. Obviously, the more as you get bigger, a lot of these services are based on usage, unlike not Course Cats. Course Cats is not based on usage. So no matter how big you get, Course Cats is always the same price. But some of these other things are based on usage, but that's okay. As you get bigger, they kind of scale with you as well. So that that's kind of a good way of looking at it. $115.95 a month. And I got to say, compared to a lot of businesses out there, I mean, especially when you're creating a product and selling it, it's just an unbelievable upside to what you have to pay to get it all structured up there. So that's what I would look at, about $115.95 a month. Cool? Is that cool? All right. Nice. I like to feel like people respond to me when I'm doing the podcast. When I say cool, they go, oh yeah, it's cool. You to pretend there's a special room of people here listening to this podcast, right? Which there is, but all around the world. Okay. Now let's get to our next question here. This is from Holly, who is another uh, birth coach. So that, that's interesting. It's a really interesting topic is being a birth coach and, and helping people with birth-related things. So Holly here, and I, I love this link, kickassbirth.com. Kickassbirth.com. Okay, cool. That's I love it. I already love your style, Holly. Cool stuff. Let's go into the question. Psychological issues with launching. I completed my course about pain coping in childbirth 18 months ago. I know it's amazing. I've been teaching this stuff for 13 years to small groups every six weeks. Awesome. So let me stop right there before we even get to the question. Holly, I mean, that's awesome for a few reasons. Number one, boy, oh boy, do you have the credibility. You have the experience. You've got the passion for it. And by the way, I love that you know that your course is amazing. You should, you should know it's amazing, right? If you, if you create a course and you don't think it's amazing or you're like, eh, I don't know about this, then you end up not pushing hard. You end up not telling the world about it, right? And so those are all great places to start. So let's talk about where you're at. I'm struggling with launching and growing because I'm terrified of having to deal with comments and conversations about the topic in an online space. Birth is very personal and many women are still processing their experience for a few years afterwards. Once 
they've had their baby, some 10% are even traumatized. This is something I'm trained to handle in a one-on-one situation where I can skillfully help them process their experience. But in a comment section under an article, right, it could be a lot of bruised people re-entering themselves as they talk about it. I know that growth will put a smack in the middle of that and I don't want to. I also know that my course helps minimize some of this trauma because I speak to the roots of the trauma in the course. But unless I can, I can vet every single person in my group, it feels like a, like a, like a shit show waiting to explode. So, this is really interesting, Holly. And first of all, I, I would have to say from the beginning, I mean, let's respect this, of course. That's a very difficult subject to deal with. But you're creating a safe environment for these people. And this cannot hold you back from creating a successful course because people need your course. You need people to need your course. You need to build a successful business. They need to get help with this. So you're not, by not launching it but through this fear, you are holding back for what the world needs from you. And you, and you are holding back from creating a successful business with this. So first of all, what we've always talked about before is that's a limited belief. You know, a course is not just an article with a comment section. You can create this in a very safe space for people to comment if you so choose, right? If you so choose, that's the key here. Because with your course, it's your rules. You wanna make sure to maximize everyone's experience and help them get results. Might that mean that there is no comment section? Maybe there is, maybe there's not a comment section. Maybe there's no way to leave comments. Maybe that doesn't make sense for this course. Or if it does make sense, how can you put it in an appropriate setting? Is it a Facebook group, right? Is it something like that? And you got to realize when you're creating a course, you're helping people at scale because the key to the course is the course, right? That that's The course should stand alone as it is with these other things just being part of it, not the course itself. So you have to really think, what would be the safest for you and for these women to deal with this? Would it be a private Facebook group? Would it be no comments at all? Would it be like something like an not not an anonymous, a private email address so they can get a response from you and your team? But again, you gotta you gotta think about scaling issues there because you don't want to get into one on one coaching. That's not what this is. This is a course. So my thing is figure out a way that you're going to make it work for you and so that you feel comfortable with it. And people will kind of fall in line to the rules and the parameters that you create. But please, please, please don't let this hold you back because the world really does need this. I mean, this is an important course. This is what you're working on. You have the expertise. You have the background. You got to do it. So that's what I would say for this. And that, it's a great question. Thank you for writing that one in because a lot of times it's these kind of limiting beliefs that can really kind of hamper us, right? It can, it can, it can keep us stuck thinking, oh my God, I, I, I'm not good enough or, or, oh my God, this might happen. That's one of the scariest things that can hold back a business. This might happen. We don't know what the heck's going to happen, right? We can always adjust once we get the ball rolling off the hill, but until you actually launch it, we don't really know. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Awesome. And let us know how it goes with that, Holly, as well. We will let you know. Let us know. We'll let the world know. How's that sound on the podcast? Cool? All right. Next up is Kelly. I think we have time for just a couple more questions. And this is definitely going to be a multiple episode series, my friends. I hope you enjoy this kind of rapid fire questions. We, we take care of a lot of them. This is, we're going to probably spread these out over a few episodes because there's so many great questions as well. Also have some coaching and consulting episodes coming up, some success stories, all kinds of good stuff. Okay. Oh my God, we got another parenting coach, but this time we have a gentleman. It's Dan from the parentpacifier.com. The parentpacifier.com. It must be it must be parent day here. Maybe it's because I said that my daughter was going to the dentist at the beginning of this episode. I don't know. Okay, here we go. Let's see if we can help Dan. Dan says, my challenge is figuring out what online course to create. I already have a parenting affiliate board. Parent Pacifier, my, where my wife and I help expecting a new parent save time and headaches with baby product reviews and parenting tip videos. Love this. My skills and passions are in the video space, and I have a few ideas to go there for courses. To go with leveraging my parenting email list, I can create a course teaching parents how to shoot and easily edit video for better home videos. That's an interesting one. Or I could also teach video for parents like my wife and I who are motivated to make more income for their family by a brand, blog, or YouTube channel. That's also interesting as well. I also have a desire to teach a course to teach small churches and church plants. 
Not sure what a church plant is. I'll have to find out about that. How to create great video at low cost to communicate better with their congregation community. That's interesting as well. The problem with that, though, is I'm creating two different businesses at once. So pumped to create a course. I've gone through Create Awesome online courses and Create Awesome Facebook groups, but I'm stuck at the problem of too many ideas, just not sure where to put laser focus on and go. Thank you, Dan Norton. So this is great. And and this is a very typical issue, Dan, for everyone listening as well, of you've got so many ideas swimming in your head. Where do you start when it comes to an online course, right? And, and, you know, Dan has done a pretty good job here of diagnosing where his skills are, where his email list is, et cetera. It starts really with two different things, in my opinion, passion and market. So let's talk about passion for a second. It's that old cliche. I say it all the time that you know money follows passion, not the other way around. It is very true. And it is so true with an online course. And I actually hear people saying sometimes like, oh no, you don't need to be passionate about your subject. Just get it out there and sell it or just get what's going to sell fastest or all this other just crappy advice that's out there in the internet marketing world. It, it, it's terrible because at the end of the day, you better love that topic you're teaching. Now, does this mean that it's going to be necessarily the topic you're going to be teaching the rest of your life? No, but this is going to be, it might be, by the way, it might be for many of us, it is, but here's the thing. You have to have a real desire and love for this topic, because if you don't, you're, you're just not going to put up with the challenges. Like the, the first, second or third challenge, you're going to fall apart and say, this isn't worth it. You know, you're not going to fall, you're going to fall apart when you have to put structures and systems in the less six sexy part of this business in place right? So you have to really think about first, who are these awesome people that you really want to serve? You know, and you have to pick one. You have to pick one to start. You can't just be creating random courses all over the place, churches, parents, etc. Do you want to help parents? Do you want to help churches? That's the first thing I would start with. What are you really passionate about? If you were not getting paid for it, which one would you help, right? If someone said, you know, I'm just trying to come up with every weird analogy. If someone literally put a gun to your head and said, choose one, what would you go with? Is there one that you're more passionate about? Right? Now, all things being equal there, and by the way, that should should definitely give you the answer. All things being equal there, let's take a look at the market. Where are people paying for information? Do churches pay for information? Do parents pay for information? And if so, what information are they paying for? And can you serve this as a as a basically you're a coach? When you have an online course, you're a coach right? You're a coach. That's what you are. You're a coach, you're a consultant, if you will. um, And you're doing it at scale. Okay. So are parents going to pay to shoot and easily edit for better home videos, right? That might be a little bit of a softer topic. To me, that'd be less likely for parents to pay for that. To me. Now you have to do your research on that yourself, right? But to me, it screams, ah, I don't know about that, right? Parents, eh, are they going to do that or not? I don't know. Could you teach parents like your wife and I to make more income for their family with a brand blog or YouTube channel? Assuming you've got the chops for that, as Gary Vaynerchuk might say. So assuming that you've made a fair amount of money and you've got it systemized and that's something you could teach, I could tell you right now, that is definitely a great topic, right? So meaning teaching parents, you know, couples, whatever it might be, how do you grow a brand blog, YouTube channel online, something very specific like that? Absolutely. But that's also assuming that you know this down pat, that you know this down pat, and that's something that you could bring to the market as well. So that's a, that's a great one. And then the churches and the church plants, again, I'm not 100% sure what a church plant might be. I have a feeling it's not a little, like a ficus with a cross on it. I feel like it's something else. But Is that something that they would pay for? Is that in the budget? Is that something that would sell? Is that someone that you can reach? Okay. That's something that you want to think about as well. If it was me and I was going at it, I would look what I've already done and then I can teach other people. And and if you think about that, what have I already done that I love that I could teach other people? That's how I got started. So when my first course was create awesome interviews, I had done over 500 interviews. I could wake up in the middle of the night and talk about interviews people ask me all the time about interviews. And so for that was my first online course was called Create Awesome Interviews, teaching people how to do interviews. I went from my own experience. That is the best place to start is your own experience and also your own passions and and your own expertise. So when I look at this and dissect it, and this is the way you're going to look at it, unless you just really don't like dealing with parents, but it sounds like you do because that's your business and that's your blog, I have a feeling that that category of teaching parents you know, who are motivated to make more income from their family, a brand blog or YouTube channel, that to me seems like a great sweet spot. 
uh, for you. That's what I get from dissecting that. But those are the questions to look about. Now, for everyone else that's listening to this as well, you know, and you and you're sitting there and you say, I don't know if I should teach this, 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 or that, or all of them, or test all of them. You want to commit to one to start. You know, that's very important. And I see people like, I don't want to be pigeonholed or this or that. Well, then online courses might not be for you, quite frankly, because you want to start with somewhere where you can put all that effort and focus and you want to go from there. So, you know, trying five different things, choosing five different topics. And Dan's in an interesting situation. He already has these parents as an audience, right? So that makes a lot of sense to say, well, I've already got this audience. You know, what might they need from me that I love? And assuming that it's something that you enjoy teaching and that you are that you know a lot about, it's really a no-brainer. You don't need to make it more difficult on yourself and say, well, you know what? I need to now figure out how do I market to churches and how do I figure this out? You, you haven't done that yet. You've done that with parents though. So to me, that's really the no-brainer. That's really the no-brainer, Dan. So that that's what I would say, and that that's my advice that I would give to you and wish you the best of luck with it, my friend. All right? Cool. Woo. Deep breath. Deep breath, my friends. That was a... Taking on a lot of questions. It's funny because I have a lot of questions in front of me right here that have been submitted. And I like to go in depth on each one versus kind of just skirting into it and, you know, kind of, you know, going surface level. I like to try to really get in here, figure out the lessons and teach them as well. So I'm going to definitely do another one of these episodes coming up, you know, do even more of your online courses questions answered as well. By the way, I hope you like these. Always send me feedback. I love to hear feedback about the show, David at the rise to top.com. And if you're really enjoying the show, really appreciate an iTunes review at the rise top.com slash iTunes. So I'll be back with much more questions. We've got other things going on. You know, there's going to be all kinds of delicious goodness coming up here on the show. Reminders on the way out. You can subscribe at the rise slash subscribe. It's got all the different options. Brand new episodes of the rise to top podcast every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Central coming right at you. Also, was I also going to say, oh, and duh, if you are interested in creating your own online course right now, a great place to start, and you're not sure, you maybe you're not even sure on the topic, maybe you've got the same questions happen today, maybe you're starting from scratch, maybe you've got tons of experience, but you're just trying to figure out how do I put this all together, wherever you're at, I've got you covered. Great place to start is with my free training, which you can check out at createawesomeonlinecourses.com. Sign up for the free training. I will give you a great overview of online courses. We'll go through the pros. We'll go through the myths. We will go through the seven steps to kind of walk you through an overview of the process of the Create Awesome Online Courses system. You'll learn a lot from it. And of course, there's going to be a special enrollment offer for Create Awesome Online Courses, my number one program for creating, promoting, and profiting from online courses as well. As part of that training, you can sign up absolutely free, 100% at createawesomeonlinecourses.com. All right, my friends, I will see you next time. It's been David Seth McGarland here on the Rise Top Podcast. And remember, if you want some fluff, you know what to do. Go pet a bunny.